what instantly makes a man unattractive. I know this dude who is like a solid 10 in all departments, I constantly joke that he's gonna steal my man, my mom, and the fucking cats too, but the other day he was sharing his rebound stories and kept talking about he was gonna break hearts and ruin her, I was like dot 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 bro ee -e, you never let a woman hear you say that, you just turned into a sack of potatoes. Bad hygiene, right? People do not understand how much basic hygiene can make a difference. I've been told by insoles on this site that brushing your teeth, wearing clean clothes that fit, and having good posture is meme level advice and none of that shit matters. Well, let me tell you that the folks that actually get in my pants don't think that's meme level advice. Basics, like clothes that fit and non stinky breath, can go so far in making anybody way more attractive and approachable. This guy that I play basketball with happened to run into me and my family at the mall. He asked what I do for a living, so I told him I'm an attorney. All of a sudden, he starts telling me how he works for AT&T and does all this shit across four counties and has over 500 working under him. I was confused at first why he was telling me all that stuff. I think it was because he felt challenged or something by me saying I was an attorney. My self-worth has nothing to do with my job, so I was really lost. Hell, I only told him what I do because he asked. I kinda felt bad for him because he must have some sort of complex about it. It makes me wonder how he behaves around someone whom he perceives to be below him in stature. People like to say money never brings happiness or money doesn't impress me but subconsciously I think most people value money a lot more than the other traits people think they care about. Also depends, what if they don't say it in an arrogant way. For example I have a successful business or I'm a landlord those two have a I imply that they're rich without directly saying so. I think it's more about arrogance. Constantly lying or humiliating anyone for humor. Edit, a lot have been asking about self-humiliating humor. Chandlers, I do that too. Sometimes it makes me feel good, but many times people take advantage and lenience. They don't understand that me making fun of myself is not an invitation to them doing the same to me. So just gotta be careful about the people around. I remember a date I had with a guy almost 25 years ago. I remember it because we went out to eat at a local pizza restaurant. In the time it took me to eat half a slice, he had vacuumed up the rest of the pie which included loud, open mouth chewing and belching. Chunks of food landed on his shirt. There were snuffling sounds as he shoved food down his maw. I don't remember anything else about that night but his disgusting method of eating. Total deal killer. I know it's dumb, but as a former fat kid, I'm always conscious of coming off like this, so I'll always order the easiest menu item so I don't look too disgusting, at least for the first date, anyway. If for a year in, they can see me at my full power. Reminds me though, friend of mine went on a date with a bloke in uni who ordered pulled pork, and ate it like he'd not been fed in months. The moment my friend realized it wasn't going to work was when the guy looked up at him and he had a smear of BBQ sauce on his forehead like Simba in The Lion King. What's even funnier is that I saw one of our mutual friends last year and she mentioned him. She told me he was heartbroken I never went out with him again and took it really hard. I wasn't mean or anything and I never knew he felt so strongly about me. Absolutely no clue. But if that was the case, then that means he was probably on his best behavior that night. I can't imagine what worse manners might have come out if I'd seen him again. So is my wife. The brewery she works at named a beer after her, before I was with her, called the MILF. Kind of funny when you're dating someone initially, but not very cool when it's her wife. Regardless, I just ignore most of the D-bags in the bar if I'm ever in there. It's not worth it to get worked up anymore. I bartended through my years at Purdue University and later in life at a crowd beer, cocktail bar. I'm no stranger to the scene. <coughs> Bragging about how little you do for your kids. I know it sounds ridiculous but I've had several men do this while flirting. One was flirting with me while at Target. 
I was buying diapers for the kids I nanny. And as we're flirting he just casually goes yeah I don't do diapers. You don't? Then who does? You're going to make your spouse do all of them. I also don't do diapers. I get around this by making sure I don't have any kids, which is what you should do if you don't want to do kid shit. Honest to God, I don't like kids and don't want any. But fathers who are like ain't oi none of that shit drive me nuts. If you have a kid, fucking take care of it. Or at least admit that you're garbage at taking care of a kid and then fuck off and pay your child support instead of bragging about being a shitty parent. Very well, where do I begin? My father was a relentlessly self-improving boulangerie owner from Belgium with low-grade narcolepsy and a penchant for buggery. My mother was a 15-year-old French prostitute named Chloe with webbed feet. My father would womanize, he would drink, he would make outrageous claims like he invented the question mark. Sometimes he would accuse chestnuts of being lazy, the sort of general malaise that only the genius possess and the insane lament. My childhood was typical, summers in Rangoon. Lose lessons. In the spring, we'd make meat helmets. When I was in Saland, I was placed in a burlap bag and beaten with reeds. Pretty standard, really. At the age of 12, I received my first scribe. At the age of 14, us Zoroastrian named Bill ritualistically shaved my testicles. There really is nothing like a shore and scrotum. It's breathtaking. I highly suggest you try it. Being destructive, particularly when other dudes or other people are nearby. Breaking things on purpose. Hitting things that shouldn't be hit like walls or windows or destroying other people's art, property. It doesn't make you cool or strong it makes you a wasteful jerk I won't invite back into my life ever again. This is my most upvoted comment ever holy cow. Mostly this came from stories from friends about their friends, stuff I've seen online and personal experiences with my brother. I was the only girl in a group of 5 guys when I was like 8 or 9 and all of them were super destructive when they all got together, otherwise they were great. I had a crush on one of them but he was being destructive, I don't remember what he did. And I quit liking him. Also my ex-boyfriend's friend destroyed a lot of his stuff. And he'd let him. Including a painting I made my ex for his 16th birthday. I was really proud of it and if he didn't want it he could have sent it back. You are not like other girls. Edit. So a lot of you asked why this is not a compliment and taken in a bad light. In my experience, this is not told to girls you find unique. Like many of you said, it is most often told to girls who have some traits that are stereotypically considered as non-feminine. For example you are into video games, you're funny, you play some sport, you are a good driver, you speak bold, etc. When you say you are not like other girls, you are only feeding into the stereotype that girls who do feminine things are lame and this girl is better and cooler because she does boy things. Which is not true. A lot of girls do a lot of things. There are no specific boy things and girl things to do. All girls are the same when it comes to stereotyping girls. This is why you are different from the other girls is a bad compliment. I work with a guy who likes to condescend me and try to explain my job to me almost every time we are on shift together. I have been at the job longer and I'm more qualified than him but he still treats me like I need my hand held through everything I do. Super super annoying. But yeah, I've seen him do it to the other guys on shift too so at least it's not just a woman. But I don't think that actually makes it any more tolerable. I don't like generic parties, the keg stand and obnoxious music type at least. I prefer modest and amicable get togethers where people have fun, and play a board game if they want, or merely socialize and casually have some drinks if they want, or play ping pong in the garage if they want. Nobody disturbs one another, and everyone is cool with each other. That's my type of party. Can I answer from a man's perspective? I'm in my late 30s. For the most part, I have my shit together. I like to play video games on my time off. I only get to play a few hours out of the week. But I've seemed to be meeting a rash of ladies that are turned off when I say my plans are to just have a beer, unwind and play some Rocket League with my friends. I stopped giving a fuck a long time ago. I don't need my soul to game with me. 
but I shouldn't feel bad for having fun with my dudes and playing games. I'll be playing video games when I'm 60. Deal with it. I always wonder if it's a good idea to put that I game on my dating profile, being 45. I think there is a mentality in people of our age group that video games are for kids, which I suppose they were when we started off playing them in the 80s, but it's so much more than that now. My kids are used to an adult playing games. They play their own ones, I play mine, and we play together too, so I guess their mindset will be different when they get older. Playing video games is not inherently a turn-off. Playing video games is a turn-off when there's shit to do in the house. Trash is full, dishes are dirty, bed is unmade, crap laying about everywhere. He hasn't showered, and that game is going on for 6 hours. Like I don't mind if there's game playing, that's cool. But when all that other stuff is happening in the background and someone's magically taking care of it and you are completely unaware, that really sucks. It's horrible wanting to sit down and unwind, you're not the messy one, but there's all this stuff to do first, and the guy's just like I'll take the trash out later, stopping up the works because you can't in the meantime throw anything else away while the trash is full. Being too pushy, one of my ex-boyfriends was constantly bringing up sleeping with me and even tried to coax me into his apartment, car later at night. Eventually it got to the point where I had to break up and threaten him after he was harassing me. Edit, going to clarify it was legal threats, that is getting campus police to stop by his apartment. I'm a small framed guy so don't get to make physical threats mean much. I fully expect tons of people who are attracted to men to come and disagree with this. I am also a depressed man, but I don't think that's what is unattractive on its own. It's probably not something you should lead with when developing a relationship, because it lacks attractive qualities, but I don't think that's the same as it being something that instantly makes someone unattractive. It is not enough to lack unattractive qualities in dating. You also need to have attractive qualities, in my view confidence, self-worth, and a good sense of humor, apart from the things like physical attractiveness that we can only adjust with hygiene, dress, and grooming, seem to be some of the most impactful ones. While having depression can move someone to have less of confidence, self-worth, and a sense of humor, I don't think it necessitates their absence. Officially, Depression affects 18.1% of the U.S. adult population. I expect the number is much higher than that. Burying it is not the solution, in my opinion. If a person ghosts you because you have depression, then congratulations on dodging a bullet. There are people who will care about you in your depression. Just make sure your depression doesn't define you. I know that's not the easiest advice to follow. I'm not great at it myself, but there's no room for me to complain if all I'm offering in relationship is my life's problems. Note, to clarify, I'm literally talking about me here. I don't know your situation, so I'm going off my own life and where I've seen success and failure. I agree with you in the sense that there's balance between attractive and unattractive qualities that often needs to be met. The balance is probably different for each person, but generally I think the attractive has to outweigh the unattractive in a way that results in a sizable net attractive. On a similar vein, with the nice guys finish last sentiment, I find that if someone's only attractive quality is being nice, that's not enough for me. Being nice is a baseline requirement to even consider dating someone. Being dumb, I will get downvoted for sure, but hear me out. I had a boyfriend who was not that smart. I thought it shouldn't matter. We lasted a year. We had discussions going round and round in circles without any resolution. He did not get my jokes, nor did I get his. He was kind and loved me, but I needed more mental challenges than he could offer. This, an important part of a relationship is to equally respect each other. When there is a considerable difference in intellectual levels then it's very hard to have that. Not being smart enough is not a problem. Being too smart is not the problem either. You just need to find a person that can respect you for who you are and that you can respect back. You lose the respect, you start to develop negative emotions like contempt or disgust. At that point the relationship is dead.
feigned incompetence to get out of doing the fair share, being generally inconsiderate, insecurity, is the kind that manifests as homophobia, transphobia, or other types of ignorance, misogyny, wearing or displaying a confederate flag or rump paraphernalia, that's a real problem here in the south, being a dumbass, is thumbing themselves down around other male friends. How about something from a gay man? Yas queens, drama queens, go away. You are the black hole at the center of a galaxy of insanity. I do not want to orbit you. Guys who build their entire personality around certain things. Men who think they are witches. Occultism. Cringe. No job. At my age, 30, I don't want to date somebody who is always struggling financially. Get a job, a stable job and work. Doesn't matter if you are programming missiles or consulting, you had better have a job and it should pay decently. I don't want a sugar daddy, just somebody who can pay their way and buy the occasional gift without crying or feeling guilty. Lack of education, mostly pride about being stupid. It's not cute. At my age, 30, I don't want to date somebody who is always struggling financially. Get a job, a stable job, and work. To be fair, that isn't always a result of employment status. I, for example, have never been unemployed longer than a few weeks since I started working. At age 14, I'm now late 30s, and as for stability have been at the same job for close to a decade now. But a custody battle will do a hell of a lot of financial damage. Same goes for medical bills insurance won't cover, etc. I read a quote somewhere that said something like girls are drawn to witches because they're one of the few powerful female cultural figures whose power isn't derived from their relationship to a man, or something like that. Girls have been into witchy stuff for ages, wind your boards, light as feather, stiff as a board, bloody merry. Etc. are classic girls sleepover games for a reason, and the popularity of witchy stuff tends to cycle through popularity amongst older girls and women but never really goes away. This article is a fascinating read about the long historical precedent for this and various ways it's manifested. Not sure why COVID would have lead to a resurgence in popularity, though, maybe because a lot of people felt disempowered from the experience, not knowing when, if ever things would get back to normal. In America, not having a lot of money. I know money is valued and seen as an attractive quality mostly all over the world but in the US money slides you up and down that attractiveness scale for many women to a ridiculous degree. Plus, if you have enough money, you can completely forgo any other aspect of attractiveness such as body shape, being an asshole, etc. Never been in the situation, probably never will. But if I'm romantically interested in a person and they announce they are ace, would it be inappropriate, insulting to ask if that goes for being sex repulsed or if they would still be able to participate? It seems so shallow, especially since it takes me so long to develop sexual attraction to someone. But I think it might make me a little upset to be in a relationship that I couldn't have that form of connection at all. It's basically when someone tries to imply what a good person they are by very publicly displaying such good traits. Filming handouts is an example, diatribes against racism or sexism that feel more like pandering than real problem solving, or really anything that makes you roll your eyes because you suspect they really want people to see them as a good person, rather than doing or saying it out of a real place in their heart. TL semicolon doctor Wisecrack did a great video essay that talks about the boys and social justice. Virtue signaling is a major piece of it. Contains the boys. Season 2 spoilers. It's where someone's words or actions are done explicitly to display personal values. I think everything meaningful has some level of virtue signaling. It's just the nature of our brains. Communication and living in communities and societies. Calling something out as virtue signaling tells others what you think about a given topic and on the nature of virtue signaling. It cannot be escaped. But the big, performative stuff is usually what people gripe about. The other thing that gets gripes is just talking about something that is typically associated with a political ideology. Specifically, 
It's common for people on the right to call something virtue signaling if it is leftist and tied to morality. So a person might say we should believe women when they speak out about sexual harassment. Another might call it virtue signaling and assert the statement was only made so others would think the speaker is woke. But calling out woke culture also signals a desire for authenticity to others and, usually, signals conservative values. It really is fruitless to complain about signaling just because it is so ingrained in the human condition. 